Beruchim Haboim, welcome everyone. We're about to begin Be'ezras Hashem together on Daf Kuf Yud Aleph, Amr Aleph, four lines from the bottom. The Gemara is quoting the Mishnah, which is dealing with Refuah on Shabbos, as saying, Ha'choshesh b'mosnov, if a person has a pain between his rib and his hips, in his waist area, then it says you cannot put wine or vinegar, because that would then be indicating that he's doing so for medicinal purposes. A healthy person doesn't do that. However, he may, he may put oil on because a healthy person does put oil on his body. The Mishnah goes on to say that if it's oil that's made out of vered, roses, special type of oil that is expensive, since people don't typically put that type of oil on their skin, therefore, it's also to do on Shabbos because then it would be indicative that he's doing so, that he's doing so for refuah purposes. However, Rabbi Shimon argues, and Rabbi Shimon says that since all of the Jewish people are B'nai Malachim, and since the Tanakhama himself says B'nai Malachim can do so because they do so during the week, therefore they're able to do so even on Shabbos, on their makos, on their wounds, so, so too they can do it even on Shabbos. Rabbi Shimon says, not only B'nai Malachim, all of Klai Yisrael have the din of B'nai Malachim. Says the Gemara, Omar Rabbi Abo Barzavdo Omar Rav. He quotes Rav as saying, Halacha Kirabi Shimon. The Halacha is like Rabbi Shimon. Now the Gemara understands over here that Rav, if he's saying the Halacha like Rabbi Shimon emphatically, it's not just over here, but he's making like Rabbi Shimon in other places too in regards to Hilcha Shabbos. And therefore, ask the Gemara, Lememra de Rav, Kirabi Shimon Svirale. Does this mean to say that Rabbi, Rav holds like Rabbi Shimon? In other places too, even regards to the Davashem Miskavain, the Vedavash, sorry, Davashem Eno Miskavain, that Rav is going to hold like Rabbi Shimon, who says that it's going to be Mutter. Hare, there's a machlok between Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yehuda, if a Davashem Miskavain is Mutter or Osir. Says the Gemara, Vomar Rav, Simi Bar Chia Mishmei de Rav, that Rav said, Hai Mesuchraya de Nezaiso. We're on top of Kuf Yud Aleph Amad Beis. Rav himself says that it's prohibited for a person to take a cloth and as, use it as a stopper on a barrel next to where the faucet is. Let's say there's a hole between the faucet uh, and the barrel itself has a small hole in it. So you cannot stop it with a beged because by pushing that in, he may then cause a malacha of schita. So Rav says, even though it's a Dov She'enam is kaving, it's also to do that, which implies that he does not hold like Rabbi Shimon. Answers the Gemara, Bihahi afilu Rabbi Shimon moide. You should know that even Rabbi Shimon agrees in such a scenario that would be permissible to do. Why? Says the Gemara, Da'abai v'rov da'amrei travayu moide Rabbi Shimon b'psik reisha v'layomus. Rabbi Shimon, I said it wrong before, that even Rabbi Shimon moide, this is also, this is prohibited. Because it's a Davashem Eskavein that is a Psik Reshe. A Psik Reshe we described many times before that a Psik Reshe literally means cutting the head off. If a person would cut off the head of a chicken, certainly it will die. If a person does a Malach, even as Davashem Eskavein, he doesn't intend to do it. But it will for certain, for certain happen, then it's considered to be a Psik Reshe. And even somebody like Rabbi Shimon who holds Davashem Eskavein as Mutter would hold that it's Osir. So therefore Rav can hold like Rabbi Shimon. And also hold that over here that it's also because even Rabbi Shimon agrees that by taking such a cloth and stopping up a hole next to the faucet would be a psik ratio and therefore would be also. Says the Gemara, the Omar Rav Chia Bar Ashi Omar Rav. Rav Chia Bar Ashi said the name of Rav in regards to the Machlugs in Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yehuda, that Halach is Rabbi Yehuda in the Dov Shem is Kavin. V'rav Hanan bar Ami Amar Shmuel halach Rabbi Shimon. That Shmuel holds like Rabbi Shimon. So there's a machlokes in Rav and Shmuel. Rav holds like Rabbi Yehuda. That Dov Shem is Kavin is Osir, and Shmuel holds like Rabbi Shimon. That Dov is Kavin is Mutter. V'rav Chia bar Avin Masni la Beloi Kavre. V'rav Chia bar Avin he taught this himself without using another Amara, and he said the same thing. Rav Amar halach Rabbi Yehuda. Ushmuel Amar halach Rabbi Shimon. That Rav holds like Rabbi Yehuda in regards to a Dov Shem Kavin that's Osir, and that Shmuel is the one who holds like Rabbi Shimon that it's Mutter. 
So we're left with the question, how can you say that Rav holds like Rabbi Shimon in our Mishnah in regards to the Shemen Vered? That's saying that all Klai Yisrael are like Bnei Molochim. They have the din of Bnei Molochim that it is permissible to use on Shabbos. Answers the Gemar El Omar Rove, Ani Ve'ari Shebechaburo, Tagim No, I and the Lion of the Chaburo, we translated, Umanu, who is that Ari Shebechaburo? Rabbi Chia Bar Avin. We said, Halacha Ki Rabbi Shimon, Velav Mi Taimei. When it says the Halacha Ki Rabbi Shimon, that Rav said the Halacha Ki Rabbi Shimon, it means he holds that the Halacha Ki Rabbi Shimon in regards to the Shemen Vered, but not for his reasoning. Ask the Gemara, my halacha Rabbi Shimon v'lav mitayim. What is that referring to? Says the Gemara, ilay mo halacha Rabbi Shimon the shari v'lav mitayim. It means the ilu Rabbi Shimon sover mosi v'rav sover loy mosi. That Rabbi Shimon holds that it's that it's something that is going to be a healing element, the Shemin vered, and still you can use it because klaus are bnei malachim, whereas Rabbi. Whereas Rav says that it doesn't heal, and therefore that's why Kla Yisrael can go ahead and use the Shemin Vered on Shabbos. Because it's not for medicinal purposes, and therefore it wouldn't be Muchach for Refuah. The Gabbai says that can't be. It says in the Reisha, it says in the Tanakhamo, B'nei Malochim Sachin Agameik Makosem Shemin Vered. That B'nei Malochim do use the Shemin Vered for, ma- for their Makos on Shabbos because they do so also on their regular skin during the week. So we see that it's used for a medicinal purpose. Even Rav would agree with that. Ella, so what is the kavan that, that Rav holds like Rabbi Shimon, but not like his reasoning? As follows. Ella, halach Rabbi Shimon, the shari, v'lam mitaymei, di'ilu raish, di'ilu Rabbi Shimon, sovar af, agad de l'shchiyach shari. Rabbi Shimon says, even though it's not typical, it's not found, meaning because it's, something that's very expensive, and therefore a typical Jew does not use it for his skin. But since Kla Yisrael has the din of B'nai Molochim, it's permissible. V'rav sovar ishchiyach in, only if it's a place where Kla Yisrael do use such shemen vered, then they can use it on Shabbos too. V'ilo shiach lo, and if not, not. U'ba'asr dira shchiyach mishcho devarda. And the place of Rav, they did use typically such Shem and Vered on sh- uh, during the week, and therefore they can use it even on Shabbos. Hadran Aloch Shmoine Shrotzi. The parak opens up with the following Ve'elu Kishorim Shechayovin Alem. And these are the knots that a person will be held liable for, either if he does so, Beshoigeg, a Korban Chatos, Bemezi, Chayev Miso, as follows Kesher Hagamolin, the Kesher Hasaponin. The knots of the one who drives the camel, or the knot that's made by the sailor of a ship, of a boat. Now, really there are two parts, the Gemara will discuss, but we'll mention now, that in regards to a camel, they would make a hole in the nose of the camel, they would insert a ritsua, and then they would make it a, a ring, a loop, and then they would tie both ends, closing that loop. They would also have another ritsua, or a rope, that was a, then connected, that would be connected to this loop, and they would also connect it, let's say, sometimes to an amud, in order to then keep the gamal in place. Similarly, when it comes to a boat, in front of the boat, there was a, a part of the boat that had a hole, so they would then stick a chevel, a rope, into that hole, and then they would cause a loop to be formed, tying a knot from both ends, leaving a loop. Then they would take another rope and they would attach it to this loop. And then sometimes they would attach it also to the Amud, let's say, at the seashore. So the Mishnah is talking about over here, and the Gemara will identify this as the Kesha that's going to be the loop itself. That is the Kesha Shal Kayama, which a person will be Chayiv for. The Mishnah goes on to say, Kishem Shehu Chayiv Al Kishuron, Kahu Chayiv Al Heteron. Just like a person will be held accountable for making a knot so too he'll be accountable for undoing, untying the knot. So therefore, since it's a Kesher Shal Kayam, which is Chayiv Deir Aiso, Chayiv Achatos, so too if he would untie, he'd be Chayiv Achatos. If it would not be a Kesher Shal Kayam, and therefore be something that would have some sort of lasting, but now be Kesher Shal Kayam, it'll be typically taken off after a short period of time. 
So then, let's say after a week, so then it will be potter aval also to make such a kesher, and therefore it's also dirabon. And similarly, then if a person would untie such a kesher, he would be then also being potter aval also mid dirabonon. Now we desc- we're describing over here, according to many Rishonim, that the kesher shel kayama is the sole factor in regards to making a kesher, which is a kesher mid diraisa. However, there are other Rishonim that say there's a second factor to make a kesher shel kayama to make a kesher that's a molacha diraisa. It's a kesher shel kayama is one factor, plus an additional factor that it be a maisa umin. If one has both of those factors in place, then it's going to be a kesher that a person will be chayiv for the melech of kosher for. Similarly then, if he will untie it, he'll be chayiv for untying such a kesher on Shabbos. However, according to these Rishonim, if only one of these elements are present, but he's missing one of the, the other one, that means it's a kesher shel kayama, but it's not a maisa umen, or it's a maisa umen, and it's not a kesher shel kayama, then it'll be poter aval oser midrabon, and therefore if he would untie such a kesher, it'll also be poter aval oser. The Mishnah goes on to say, Rabbi Meir Oimer, Kol kesher shehu yochel lahatiroi be'achas miyadoi, eno chayev miyadov, eno chayev alof. If a person would be able to then unta- un- untie a kesher, because, let's say, according to the first Rishonim, that it's a kesher shel kayama, but it's a little bit loose, enabling a person to then stick his fingers in and untach it with one hand, then Rabbi Meir holds that's not considered to be a kesher shel kayama. It's not going to be a kesher, rather, that is going to be a kesher that is going to be chayv for a malacha of kosher on. <clears throat> and according to the other Rishonim, that even if it has a kesher shel kayama and it's a maisa omen, but again, it's loose enough where a person can then untie it, according to Rabbi Meir, it's not considered to be a malacha of kosher on Shabbos. Ask the Gemara right away, Trying to identify what we just mentioned before, my kesher hagamolin, the kesher hasaponim. What is meant when it says in the Mishnah that a person is going to be chayiv for a kesher shel shel gamolim or kesher shel saponim? Ilay makitra de kitre bezmama ve kitra de kitre be If you're going to say it's the knot that is tied in the to the loop that goes inside the nose of the gamal, or it's the Chevel that is tied to the loop that is made in front of the ship, then high kesher she'ena shel kayomahu. These are kshorim that are not kayoma because a person, if he wants to then remove, let's say, the leash from this loop, he often does so, letting the camel run, or sometimes he reattaches it if he wants to then place the camel next to the amur and keep it there. So it should not go away. And so when he towards the boat, when he docks the boat, so then he takes that big rope and he attaches it to the loop. And when he wants the boat to then sail away, so then he de- detaches the chevel, the rope, from the loop. And that would be a kasher she'en o Answers the Gemara, el ha-kitra gufei, gufa. Rather, we're talking about the loop itself that goes inside the hole of the animal's, of the camel's nose. That loop that is made, that is tied and made a knot by the, both ends to make that loop, or similarly when it comes to the boat, by putting in that chevel and the front of the boat and tying both ends to make a knot so that you have a loop, that itself is the kesher shakayama that we're talking about. Says the Gemara, quoting our Mishnah, the Seif of Rabbi Meir, who says that if it's a kesher, that even if it's a kesher shakayama, but it is loose enough that a person can take one of his hands and detach it and untie it, then it's not considered to be a malach of kosher. Ask the Gemara the following question, Boy, Rav Acha Devui, Achui Demar Acha, Aniva the Rabbi Meir Ma, what about an Aniva? If a person then makes a bow, so there you have something that's tight, it's not loose. On the other hand, it's something that a person could undo also easily. Is that considered to be a kesher shakayama or not? Taimu de Rabbi Meir mishum de yochel lahatiro ba'achas mi yodav hu v'onam yochel lahatiro. Is it because Rabbi Meir is saying it's not considered to be the melacha of kosher because you can undo it with one hand, but here too you would also be able to undo it with one hand, and therefore would not be a kesher. It would not be considered to be a melacha of kosher by being kosher and aniva. 
Or maybe the reason for a mayor is because it's not tight. And therefore, something that's not tight cannot be considered to be as a kesher, the person will be for on Shabbos. But over here, by Ananiva, it is mehudak. It is tight. And therefore, a mayor would say it's something that a person will be kosher for. The Gemara then leaves it as an unanswered question, teku. The Gemara now quotes another Mishnah in regards to the Malacha of kosher. Yesh lecha ksharin, she'en chayovin aleyen, there are such kshorim that a person will not be chayiv for, like the kshorim of a knot of the kesher shel hagamalim, of the, of the camel drivers, as well as the sailors. Now, now, we learn from the Mishkan that the place where we find a kesher, a kesher that's kesher shel kayama, that's a malacha diaraisa, is when they used to make nets to then catch the chilazon fish. They would make the nets and they would tie the threads to make a kesha kayama to make the nets in order to then catch the fish, the chilozon. <clears throat> Sometimes, however, they would need to then make the nets smaller or bigger, whereby they would untie those ksharim. And that would be the molach of matir. So the Gemara is telling, the Mishnah is telling us that there are also other types of ksharim that are not going to be chayyim from molacha diaraisa of kosher. That would be potter aval osir. Now the, men- the Mishnah does not mention at this point, at all, what those ksharim are. But we can already say that the Gemara is going to then anticipate the Gemara and say that those, like, those chavolim that were going to be in case of the gamal, that we said going to then be a chavol that's going to be attached to the loop that is through the nose of the gamal, which is not going to be a kesher shokayam because you're going to then detach it and untie it from that loop regularly, and also when it comes to then the ship, the rope that you're going to then attach to the loop to then have it be in its port, or when you're going to then untie it so that it can then leave the port, that again will be something that's not going to catch the Shokayama. So therefore we can then explain already at this point that even though the mission doesn't mention it, those Chavolim, that leash that goes that attaches to the loop of the Gamal, that itself will be a Kesha Shein and that will be Potter Aval Oser Midir now the Mishnah lists those kshorim that are muter lichat chila. Says the Mishnah, kosheres isha miftach chaluka. A woman would go around and she would attach the her a type of blouse that has a attachment a ritzua that goes from the right side to the left shoulder and to the left side to the right shoulder. And since she would then attach and reattach, tie it, untie it to then put it on and off, that's considered to be mutter l'chat chila, since it was regularly put on and off. Says the Mishnah, another example of something that's mutter l'chat chila, is going to be v'chutei svacha. She would wear on her hair a certain type of covering, and this would then have threads that she would tie and untie, again, by putting them on and off. So therefore, it was a very most temporary type of not, and therefore that was mutter l'chat chila. Vishalpiskio. And Pshalpiskio over here is referring to if a person would ha- go with a certain belt that was a wide belt, they would tie little threads that would then help the belt stay on. And those again were considered to be a kesher that was not going to be lasting whatsoever. They would put them on and off when she would take on and off the belt. Uritsuas min al visandal. Here we're talking about those ritsuas that would go around the leg when they put on a sandal or a shoe. And again, those of course would be taken on and off when they put the shoe on and would take them off. And therefore, it's not a kesher whatsoever. V'noidois yayin v'shemen v'kishemen And those flasks that would hold wine and oil, they'd again open and close them regularly. So although they would tie them, they would untie them and tie them back on a constant basis whenever they would use that wine and that oil. The Kedera Shel Basar, another example the Mishnah brings is a Kedera Shel Basar. They would then tie a Kedera Shel Basar on top of the, the, the pot of the, of the meat that's cooking. And again, that was in order to then cover it and cook during their cooking process, which they, they would undo and tie again on a regular basis, which again would not be a problem of a Kesher at all. 
The Mishnah concludes, Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov Oimer, Koishrin lifnei ha-behemo, bishvir shelo teitzei. Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov over here is not arguing, but he's explaining that also when it comes to a kesher, when they put a behemo, let's say in the corral, and they put the behemo, and they put the, 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 the rope across, closing the corral, again, that would open and close all of the time, and therefore again, this would be a kesher that would be lichat chila to make on Shabbos. So therefore, we're left with three different kshorim. A kesher shel kayama, according to those we've shown him, just kayama is, 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 is required. And therefore, that's a kosher deraisa. Whereas other we've shown him, learn it has to be a kesher shel kayama and a maisa umnim to be a kosher midiraisa. To be a kesher midirabana would be then, according to the first we've shown him, that is not a kesher shel kayama because not over 30 days. It would be just, let's say, for over a week. Whereas the other Rishon would say, it might be a Keshe Shekayama, but it's not a Maisa Umnin, or if it's Maisa Umnin, not a Keshe Shekayama, therefore it's a Isser Midir Abonon. And we find the third category that our Mishnah lists over here, that is Mutter Lechat Chila, because these are things that are so temporary, that since the Keshe is done and undone on a regular basis, making it so that you can do so even on Shabbos.